Hey guys, Lotus Tech here back again with another video. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fully set up RetroArch on your Switch and how to get all the cores needed and also how to set up 3DS on the RetroArch. So let's get started with this. So the first thing you wanna have is a modded Switch over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the album here so we can go into the Homebrew App Store. So when we're in the Homebrew App Store, let's open it up to the Homebrew App Store, where to go? Here it is. So. Once we're in the Homebrew App Store, what you want to do is you want to search up RetroArch. When you're on RetroArch, you just want to press download here and you want to wait for it to finish downloading. When it's done downloading, you want to go back into album and then you want to open up RetroArch. So when you open it up, it'll look something like this. So this is basically RetroArch for the Switch. Now, it may be a little bit buggy, but then when an update comes, it'll be fixed or sometimes it's like this. But this is basically RetroArch for the Switch. Another way to run it is by holding the game and pressing R right here. So we're gonna do that. And this gives it all the RAM it needs to run the game fully, whatever you're gonna run on RetroArch. So let's go over stock RetroArch first. In stock RetroArch, we have a few things here. We can see that it's just very basic. You can change the layout from going to user interface and going to appearance and just changing the way it looks. So you can just mess with the settings here if you want. But we're already given these cores, Nintendo DS, Game Boy, NES, and all these, but how do we get more cores? We can get it from the download. We can get it from the online updater right here. So this is one way you can get all your cores is through the online updater here. So for example, I wanna get this core. I press this, I can press all these cores here, and it's gonna start downloading these cores onto my Switch right here. So that's one way to get the cores that you want for RetroArch. Another way is going on the computer and downloading all the other cores you need. So as you can see, it's all downloading here. And now I'll get the cores needed to run RetroArch for the Switch. Now, how do we run 3DS games on here? Which is something that you guys asked and want to see how to run 3DS games on here. So what we need is to get a file for the core. So now what we're going to do is we're going to exit out of RetroArch and we're going to go onto a way to transfer files. So we're gonna go onto the computer and I'm gonna show you what to do from there. So here we are on our computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the Citra Core for the RetroArch. Now, basically you can go to the Lotus Tech Services server from here to join this. You can join the LT, then you gotta go over here and then you wanna join the link tree. And from the link tree, you can join this server. It's a big process to join it, but it just keeps us safe. So that's one way to join is through that. Now, when you're in Switch Links, you can have it over here, and this is a good server to join. If you need help, you can join the support, and we can help you out there. But I'll leave this link in the description down below. So you're gonna see the Citra Liberto Livinex, and you wanna just download this here. And once you download that, what you wanna do is go on your Switch SD card. Now on your Switch SD card, we're gonna make a new folder. So we're gonna press new folder, and we're gonna type 3DS, 3DS games. So, I have a folder called 3DS Games. Over here, you want to add your ROMs in here. So, you want to make sure it's on a 3DS file. So, I'm going to just put it in here. The next thing you want to do is, with a new file you download, you want to unzip it. And then, once it's unzipped, you'll see we have this right here. So, what you want to do is, you want to go on to RetroArch. Then, you want to go to Course. And you can see it's all dot and rows here. So, you just want to drag and drop this in here. And that's basically how you add cores to your Switch for RetroArch. So you can add Citro or you can add any other cores you want over here. So it's pretty simple to do. So we're going to wait for this to finish copying over. But once you have everything copied over, you want to eject your SD card. And we're going to go back on the Switch and I will show you what to do from there. So here we are back on the Nintendo Switch over here. So let's go over a few things now. Now in order to load your code, we can just press the core over here and it will go black for a second, but then we're loaded back here and we can update our cores through this right here. The load content, you go here and you press slash and you can go on 3DS games and select the game you want to play here or any other games you have here. So I even have NSPs here, but that's for Switch. I also have DS rooms here, so I can open this up and they'll play my game, whatever I have here but it's something that's pretty cool to have right here. I forgot how to exit. I think he's pressing one of these and we can just press exit. But it's just something that's pretty cool to have right here. You can mess with the settings here again and 
if you do need to overclock your switch you can do that over here i don't recommend overclocking it crazy otherwise you are going to run into issues but that is basically it over here so right here you can go even more so you can go maximum performance if you really want it'll just drain your battery but that's pretty much it for this video i hope that it helped and if you have any questions you can join the discord server down below and we'll help you out over there